You don't think you need a CNC to build speakers? Here's four reasons why you're wrong. Reason number one, CNC machines are cheaper. Now I didn't say that they are cheap. I said that they are cheaper because the CNC machine can do the work of pretty much every other machine you have. Plus the CNC machine is gonna save you time and time is money. To be 100% clear, I'm not saying that CNC machines are cheap. I'm saying they can save you money in the long run. My machine's right over here in the corner. That is a Shapeoko 5 Pro. The base price for one with a four foot by two foot table is about 3,500 bucks. And I know I lost half of you right there, but hang on. <laughs> I'm about to explain to you why that's really not very expensive when you drop back and look at the bigger picture. I opted for the four foot by four foot table and I threw in the upgraded VFD spindle and went ahead and bought some accessories while I was at it all in less than $5,000, which is a lot of money. I've bought used cars for less than that. But after getting it set up, it's become the main workhorse in my shop. I barely touch any of my other tools, which is one of the reasons why this thing's gonna save you money in the long run. Here, let me show you what I mean. That right there is a $200 router sitting in a $250 router lift, sitting on a table that's gonna cost you 200 bucks to build, plus accessories to make it work like this switch and things like these inserts that go into the router lift. If you were to buy all these parts and build this table, it would set you back over 700 bucks. 700 bucks, that's 20%. That's one fifth of the cost of an entry level CNC machine for just one router in a router table. When you think about the capabilities of this right here versus the capabilities of this right here, this one right here is the overpriced one. So don't spend 700 bucks on a fancy router setup. Instead, get yourself a cheap trim router and some cheap bits. I was so proud of myself when I bought this right here. That's a saw stop with the extra long fence. After some dust collection upgrades, this is a $3,000 tool. Now that I have a CNC machine, I barely touch the table saw. Years ago when I was shopping for that table saw, I never thought I could ever afford a CNC machine. And my buddy Nick with Toys DIY told me, don't get the big table saw, use the cheap one you have now because eventually you'll get the CNC machine and you'll never use the saw. He was right. Most of you are probably not going to buy a saw stop, but a decent table saw from Lowe's or Home Depot is going to cost you 800 bucks. You could do an entry level $300 saw for the times when you need a saw or just get a track saw. Ryobi sells one for 300 bucks. So instead of a $800 saw, you could buy a $300 tool that would get the same job done and cut everything complicated over on the CNC machine. So that CNC machine is going to save you another 500 bucks on tools. 500 bucks is a 10th of the cost of this big machine right here. And then there are these things. These are templates to use with your router. Templates like this are the gold standard for car audio fabrication. And at first glance, they're not very expensive. They come in sets. Most of them are priced around hundred bucks, but they get real expensive real quick because these templates are all part of a larger template system. These rings, for example, are primary use for speaker holes, but they can't make an infinite number of rings that could fit every possible speaker. So in order to make cutouts that fit the actual speaker you're using, you've got to combine these rings with something like this, which is a series of flush trim bits and rabbiting bits with different size bearings so that you can oversize or undersize your speaker cutouts. This setup right here, which was three different kits and one tray full of bearings, plus some router bits. If you go buy all this right here today, you're going to be out 900 bucks. That's one fifth what I paid for the fully decked out CNC machine. These rings are really cool and you can do a whole lot with them. But what I found is that one or two sets, you're really limited with what you can do. To really open things up, you need to buy multiple sets. And they're designed to get you started with a set. And then next month, when you want to do something different, buy another set. The company that sells these, for example, has a kit with about 15 sets. They'll set you back about 1200 bucks. And if you're going to be really serious about custom fabrication using routers and templates, you're going to need to buy that one and probably another 500 or $1,000 worth of router bits. If you go this route, they're going to nickel and dime you to death. Before you know it, you're going to have three grand invested in pretty pieces of plastic that mostly just hang on the wall. Compared to that, the CNC machine is starting to look really cheap. I built this box right here using the templates and the results were amazing. They worked really well. And after building that box, I was hooked. I wanted to make more cool stuff. So I did what I do and I built a spreadsheet listing out the cost of everything I would need for a triple router set up in a bunch of these templates. That's when I realized I was already in the game for $1,700 and I was about to drop another three grand on upgrades. When I saw the number on the screen, I realized that this was a terrible idea. I need to go ahead and bite the bullet and get one of these things. And a big thanks to all my patrons because what I do is I set aside any money that my patrons donate 
and use that money to buy the tools that I need to make the videos. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons with a big bonus shout out to the $25 and up patrons, Jonathan, Taylor, Joaquin, JD America, Timothy, and Bo. In addition to the patrons, this channel is 100% funded by people like you watching the videos and going down to the video description and clicking on affiliate links to buy things. Carbide 3D, the people who make this Shape Oco 5 Pro, they didn't send this to me, I bought it. I don't have any big name sponsors. I've got an affiliate link down in the description for Carbide 3D if you want to check out their CNC machines. If you think you might want to buy one, go click on that link and let them know I sent you. So in spite of the fact that this big monster behind me is not cheap, it's still cheaper than the alternative. That's the main reason why I bought a CNC machine and it's why I think you should get one too. That was all reason number one. To summarize, yes, it's expensive, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad financial decision. It might be the smartest money you've ever spent. Reason number two, the CNC machine makes hard things easy. Now it also makes easy things hard. If all you wanna do is make squares and rectangles, don't waste any money on the CNC machine. Conventional tools can do that far cheaper, far quicker, far easier. But if you wanna do things that are interesting, if you wanna add angles and arcs and circles and curves and logos and artwork or, or any interesting details, the effort required to do that kind of thing with conventional tools is astronomical, but the CNC machine makes it super easy. Take for example, the pretty window braces with the rounded over edges that no one's ever gonna see that everyone thinks they should put inside their subwoofer boxes. Think about all the steps that are involved. Draw out your plans, mark out your cuts, rough cut with a jigsaw, tape down some templates, hit it with your flush trim bit, and then repeat these steps for every hole that you need to cut. When you're done with that, swap out the bit and hit it with a roundover. Check it out, this roundover bit's still in its plastic. I bought this after I bought the CNC machine and have never used it. Why did I waste that money? How long do you think all that takes? You ever time yourself when you're doing that? I know how long it takes. I've got it all on camera. When you see it in the video, I trimmed it down to a few key moments and sped up most of the footage. Back to this box right here where I used the template system to make an outer shape and the router bit and bearing system to copy that shape into this trim ring that went inside. That process required me to change the router bit 16 times. This guy back here can do most of that process with one bit. If you want to add some custom details, you can use something like this. This right here is a 90 degree V bit. You can use this to add chamfers, all your parts over on the CNC machine. And if you want to do roundovers, they've got a bit for that too. And if you want to put a rabbit on the underside to have a place to like tuck your carpet and your vinyl, you can use your cheap trim router and an inexpensive rabbiting bit like this. So three, four tool changes tops instead of 16. The CNC just makes everything easier. CNC machines are great for big projects with multiple parts and multiple cuts, especially projects that require a lot of speaker cutouts. Check out these home theater speakers that I built. When you count the terminal cup in the back, this project is gonna require 12 holes and the drivers are recessed, so you gotta cut out nine recesses. How long is it gonna to take to do all that with your circle jig? With the CNC, you just go into the software, copy paste the design, set up the machine and walk away. What if you had to drill 200 precisely spaced holes? <laughs> Try doing that by hand? At the very least, for a job like that, you'd want a drill press. A decent drill press is what, 150 bucks? No need to buy that tool when you've got one of these machines. How about kerfing? You know, making a bunch of cuts so you can make your plywood or MDF bendable? I did a poll. Most of you have never tried it, and a non-trivial number of the ones that have are willing to admit that it's a pain in the ass. But something like kerfing is ideal for a CNC machine because you can precisely dial in the depth and the spacing, then let the machine do what machines do, repeat the same thing over and over again flawlessly every time. These speakers right here were built using StackFab. I'll be sure to give you a link to the video. Traditional StackFab requires using things like these templates to construct shapes and then copying those shapes with the router. On the CNC, you just set it and forget it. How about some custom touches like logos and artwork? With the CNC machine, you just copy and paste the image. If you're doing any lettering or carving a logo, this V-bit that I showed you earlier is the perfect tool. The machine will adjust the height of the bit on the fly to get the lettering just right. Right here is one of my favorite bits. This right here is called a diamond drag bit. As the name implies, it has a diamond bit. It's also spring loaded. You can use this to engrave plastics and soft metals. This one bit in the CNC machine completely negates the need for a laser engraver. And guess what? The CNC can cut soft metals in plastic. So if you've got a CNC machine, there's really no need for a laser. That's gonna save you anywhere from 500 to $15,000, depending on the laser you're looking at. All right, I moved outside to illustrate point number three. You should buy a CNC machine because CNC machines are safer. Pretty much everything in the workshop is trying to cut off your fingers, hurl projectiles at you, destroy your hearing, poison you, or clog your lungs with sawdust. 
Nothing about this hobby should be considered safe. Your goal is to make it safer. Mr. Miyagi said the best way to avoid a punch, no be there. With the CNC machine, after you get it set up, you hit start and you walk away. The machine can't cut your fingers off if all your fingers are in a different room. The owner's manual tells you you're not supposed to leave the machine unattended, but what I have found is that after you figure out the best way to secure your workpiece to the bed and have had a little time to work out the bugs and the kinks in your processes, you really can set it and walk away from it. If something does go wrong, the most likely outcome is ruining your workpiece or breaking a bit. And when you break the bit, it can't fly into your face if you're somewhere else. If you're really worried about monitoring the machine, set up a webcam so you can monitor it from somewhere else. And when you're at that somewhere else, you can do something productive, like sit down at the computer and lay out the next design. Reason number four is dust collection. Right here is our dust collection attachment. It can hook up to a standard shop vac hose and as you can see, these brushes completely surround the bit. I can lower it a bit more to get better dust collection. This piece pops off so you can have access to the bit. Yes, some dust does get out. It's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than a dust collection on my table saw or my router table. It's a bit of a paradox because this machine here actually generates more sawdust than anything else in the shop. But because the dust collection is right on top of the bit, it's the least dusty machine. I said I had four reasons for you. Here's number five, a bonus reason. You can use this machine right back here to make money. That's true for any machine, but with things like CNC's lasers and 3D printers, if you can find a niche, if you can find something artistic or some engineering component that people might like to have, once you design the product and find the market, you can easily batch out exact replicas on your machine. I've actually got some friends here local to me that are using things like lasers and CNC machines and 3D printers to build fun side hustles for extra income. Anybody can do that because these machines are actually quite accessible when you drop back and think about the bigger picture. Anyone that runs a business understands this. Tools that look expensive aren't expensive if those tools can pay for themselves. That viable side hustle can make you extra income, and if you can find a way to scale that up, you could quit your day job. And I've gotta be completely honest with you, this CNC machine is not all wine and roses. There are some serious downsides to these machines and some really good reasons why you might not wanna bother with them. But this video is supposed to be positive and upbeat. I'm gonna put the negative video right here as soon as I get it uploaded. I'm Justin. This is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.